The White House and businesses from coast to coast are warning the supply headaches will get even worse as the holidays approach and demand gets higher. And this year, prices will no doubt be higher, too. To help get things moving again, the president says he's brokered an agreement for the Port of Los Angeles to become a 24-hour, seven days a week operation. You're hearing a lot about something called supply chains and how hard it is to uh, get a range of things from a toaster to sneakers to bicycles. Big retailers and shipping companies are also pledging to expand their hours. President Biden meeting with Walmart, UPS and Home Depot. This is the first key step toward moving our entire freight, transportation, and logistical supply chain nationwide to a 24-7 system. L.A. and Long Beach ports account for 40 percent of shipping containers that enter the U.S., both suffering from record-breaking backlogs. What happens with the railroads in the Midwest and warehouses across the country affects the number of ships that everyone sees out here in the harbor. High consumer demand, plus a shortage of truck drivers. We're about three hours late. All this is jacking up shipping costs. A year ago, it cost $1,900 to use a container. Now it's costing $16,000 because they're using the container for storage on the ships and in the ports. And adding up to higher prices at the checkout line. They are passing all these expenses on to the consumer. They have no choice. So we haven't even begun to see the inflation that is going to come from all of this. Factory workers and other supply chain issues are also keeping many items off store shelves, with shortages expected to continue through the holidays. To keep your shelves full, we have to order eight weeks in advance, eight to six weeks. Basically what I've been telling people to do is start shopping early, uh, even be before Halloween. But the Treasury Secretary is telling Americans not to panic. I think there's no reason for consumers to panic about the absence of goods that they're going to want to acquire at Christmas. The latest inflation reading shows it edged up again last month to 5.4 percent with the biggest increases in food, shelter and gas. Now, according to a bank rate survey, 89 percent of Americans now notice these higher prices at the cash register and 66 percent say they are hurting financially because of them. In Washington, I'm Tara Mergener, CBN News. Well, for more on this story, we have CBN financial editor Drew Parkhill. So, Drew, why are supply chains having such problems? Well, I'll tell you, Gordon and Terry, most people don't realize how complicated and complex supply chains really are. Because let's say something is built in a factory in China or Taiwan or wherever, then it's got to get to a port for shipping, then it can go through various shipping routes, then it'll have to come to a port, then it can get on a truck, then it can go to a warehouse or some holding station, then it can get on a railroad, then it can get on another holding station. And all these things have to be done very precisely. Well, this was shut down. We had global shutdowns around the world during COVID and so forth. It was a lot easier to shut it down than it was to start it back up because there's so much precision involved. At the same time, Demand just exploded because people have been sitting at home and whatever. Plus, Congress sent a lot, a lot of money to people. And so now people are buying things like crazy. So it's getting hit on both sides. It's very hard to get everything back up. And a big part of this, uh, Gordon and Terry, is the labor shortage. They're having a hard time finding people to be truck drivers, as Tara referred to, because there are other jobs available and for a variety of reasons. And it's not just in trucking, it's in warehouses and so forth. So it's a very intricate thing and it's not easy to get going again and it's not gonna get turned around anytime soon. So that was my question. With all these various elements involved in it, how long do you think it might be before we fix it? Well, the head of the world's largest shipping company says it's not gonna happen this year. And it, this is a global problem. It's not just in the US. So there's only so much that we can do. You know, the president, most people don't know this, but the president appointed a bottleneck czar to deal with this with a task force in June. OK, so that was months ago. And here we are. The problem is still really bad. I mean, there's only so much the government can do. At the same time, as I said before, Congress, especially the Democratic bill that was passed earlier this year, so much money has gone into the system that has 
help drive prices up as well. So this is not going to turn around anytime soon. There are a lot of issues to be worked out. It's going to go into next year, and it may go farther. Okay, well, we're seeing 5% inflation, so I'll ask the macroeconomic question that will make everybody gla <laughs> glaze over. At what point in time will the Federal Reserve have to increase interest rates? They're getting ready to do that now. They're laying the groundwork, Gordon, and they're going to have to. And let me give you just a little, I know you like history, a little bit of a history lesson. Arthur Burns was the chairman of the Federal Reserve under President Nixon. Nixon wanted interest rates to be kept low, as most politicians do. At that time, and that's, after, that's right when inflation had just started to pick up in the mid to late 60s. And there's a widespread school of thought that says when the Fed didn't act at that time, that let the inflation genie out of the bottle. Okay, and then it took off and we headed into the worst period of inflation in the entire history of the country. That's the concern. The Fed has got to, at some point, start raising rates so that this just doesn't get out of hand. But if they do, if they go too far, it could put the brakes on the economy and make things uh, even worse. But, you know, Tara mentioned that 89% of people have uh, felt the pain at the ga cash register. I'm one of them. I went to the grocery store over the weekend. I was just floored at some of these prices. You know, inflation is running, it's 5% year over year, and so far this year it's 6.5%. But on specific things like beef is up 17 and half percent, you know, and people notice that stuff. And for a lot of people, it's very difficult. You know, it costs a lot and adjusted for inflation. People's incomes are down about two percent. So since Biden took office, so people notice that the Fed is going to have to act, as you said, but they're going to have to maneuver this very carefully so that they don't hurt the economy. But at the same time, they have to contain inflation. It's not going to be easy. No, it's not going to be easy. And you took me back in history. And that got horrible at the end of the 70s. And we, we saw interest rates in go up to 18, 20 percent. Yeah. And, and it's absolutely unimaginable. So anyway, thanks yeah. for all the good news. <laughs> I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> but you can always get the latest news and more by downloading the CBN News app. Do it today. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.